Hello everyone, welcome to the quotient rule video. Hmm. Alright, well, <clears throat> this problem that you see on your screen is number 7 from the 2.4, 2.5 review worksheet. Um, I thought this one was a pretty interesting uh, quotient rule problem that I thought <clears throat> involved some tough stuff to do and you know, I wanted to make sure that we were all on the same page here. Uh, again, just like the product rule and the chain rule, I told you guys that I like to write this stuff down. I like to write what is f of x, what is g of x. Because our quotient rule, in case you don't remember, is f prime of x times g of x minus g prime of x times f of x all divided by g of x squared. Right. All right, that is our quotient rule. Right. So now, <clears throat> I put that here just to kind of remind you guys uh, what the quotient rule is, what we're looking at. The, the difference between the quotient rule and the product rule, other than the fact that obviously we're dealing with quotients instead of a product, a product is we have... Uh, we cannot alter the order in which we have the numerator. Right. F prime x, g of x has to be the first term. G prime x, f of x has to be the second term because we're subtracting. Order matters. Okay? On the bottom, g, g of x, regular, squared. Uh -huh. Just the way it is. All right? So with that being said, here we go. Um, we know that f of x is the fourth root of x minus 4 and the g of x is 2x cubed minus 7x. All right, we take the derivative of each of these guys. Or girls, depending on what you think uh, your function is. All right, so we take the cubic root of this. We know that, <coughs> I'll, I'll do the work right here and then I'll delete it. Um, x to the negative, or x to the, the, cube, the fourth root of x is the same as writing x to the one fourth. So when we take our derivative, we get one fourth x, we subtract 1 to the negative 3 fourths, so I'm going to use that, 1 fourth x to the negative 3 fourths, right. remember, uh, take the derivative here, we get 6x squared minus 7, alright, so I'm going to do some cleaning up here, this I could delete, <coughs> this, right. I'm going to take, move it right here, all this nonsense that I drew. I'm gonna edit that. Okay, so <clears throat> so what we have is we're gonna be using the quotient rule. All right. Now, with the quotient rule, we just take these, plug them in. So there is a little bit of memorization that's kind of going on, but we plug them in. We get one fourth x to the negative three fourths times g of x, which is 2x cubed minus 7x minus, now I told you guys, you really want to make sure that you have put a parenthesis here because you will forget to distribute the negative. Uh, <coughs> oh, by the way, the, the voice in the background, hang on a second, the voice in the background is my wife, she's on the phone, so I apologize if you hear that or whatever. She's a busybody. Um, anyway, so she's doing that. Um, 6x squared minus 7. And g f of x is x. And now notice I'm going to write to the 1 fourth. Just because I feel like that's a little bit um, better. And again, I'm going to put that extra parentheses. Just to kind of remind you guys that we're going to distribute that negative later on. And we still need to divide by... 2x cubed minus 7x squared. Okay? So, we go here. Obviously, we're going to see some, you know, fixing up of some of these things. So, let's, let's, let's multiply. 1 fourth times 2 is 1 half. Okay? x to the negative 3 fourths times x to the third. Remember, same base, different exponents, add. Let's find a common denominator. This is 12 over 4. 12 over 4 minus 3 over 4 is x to the 9 over 4. Alright? 
we do this, we get minus 7 fourths x to the 4 over 4 minus 3 over 4 is 1 fourth. All right, minus. I'm going to keep that parentheses, do some multiplication here. X, 6x squared times x to the fourth. Again, this is 8 over 4. 8 over 4 plus 1 over 4 is 9 over 4. So I get 6x to the 9 over 4. Uh, then minus 24x squared. If I'm going too fast, I'm just foiling. Uh, minus 7x to the 1 fourth plus 28. And all divided by 2x cubed minus 7x squared. So, we need to fix up the numerator a bit. Okay, um, notice we have like terms, x to the 9 fourths minus 6x to the 9 fourths, so we have 2x to the 9 fourths here. We need to take the the beginning here, the 1 half, and the negative 6 here. Negative 6 in terms of 1 half, because we need to find common denominators, and I, I assume you guys kind of see that. Negative 6 would turn into negative 12 over 2, so I could add, I get negative 11 halves x to the 9 fourths. This is a pretty problem, huh? Uh, then you see we have 2 neg uh, x to the fourths. Negative 7 over 4, we have negative 7. So this is the same as, um, I believe, wait a minute, let me just make sure. Yep, negative, uh, or I'm sorry, positive, right? So it would be 28 over 4. So 28 over 4 minus 7 over 4 is plus 21 over 4 x to the 1 fourth. Okay, uh, then we have plus 24 x squared minus 28. If you don't know where those signs came from, if you look over here, I distribute the negative, and I get all that divided by our 2x cubed minus 7x squared. Okay. That looks pretty. Um, so let's see. Can I make this a little bit bigger here? Maybe I can work down. Yeah, I can. Hang on a sec. Alright. Oh, beautiful. Okay, cool. Alright, so we're going to continue because now we need to... <clears throat> if you look here, okay, there's a problem. A lot of you would probably think, okay, we're done. And the reason why you'd probably think that is, for one, you're going to... I told you guys with the, with the denominator, you don't really have to multiply that out. The only time you'd have to multiply that out all right, is when you have absolutely no constants up at the top because then you would know that this would possibly, possibly factor and then you have something that will cancel. But really, this is the most simplified version of the denominator. So we can leave the denominator as is. However, look in the numerator. We have fractions. We have fractions on top of, of a fraction. Not good. So what you actually have to do here, and this is where this can get a little bit tricky, is you have to take the 11 halves x to the 9 fourths, all right, plus the 21 over 4 x to the 1 fourth plus 24 x squared minus 28 times 1 over 2x cubed minus 7x whole thing squared. That gets rid of this fraction on top of fraction. I know it's a little bit of a cop out. It's easy. You could do that. That's fine. I'm fine with this. Okay? I really am. It's unnecessary. Um. The only other thing I and if you looked on the review sheet, I said let's. I wrote down. Um, let's just call this done. Let's call this done. Okay, I wrote that down. The reason why I'm saying that is because there is, there are more steps. Um, they're basic algebra steps, meaning you got to find a common denominator and you got to for all of these because then you could put them all over four and blah 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 blah. It's just it's unnecessary at this point. I know you guys know how to do that. I'm okay with calling this done. Um it will save you time in the long run. Uh some people that might watch this video might get annoyed at me because they're gonna say, well, you know, you're not really done. 
for the purpose of learning the quotient rule and the quotient rule only, we've done our job. Okay, we used the quotient rule, you used it properly, and that's what I want out of this. Okay, um, I know this is video is kind of getting on the long side. I apologize. Hopefully it helps. Hopefully this kind of clears up any cobwebs. Quotient rule is probably the toughest rule out of all of them. Um, please make sure you study. Please make sure you practice. The secret letter for this video is S. All right. Um, you will definitely, if you are in my class, you know what that means. If not, just bypass it and move on. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, good luck studying, and uh, thanks again. Peace.